Annyeong! Welcome to Delightful! It's springtime! The cherry blossom trees are in full swing, the flowers are blooming, and I can't hold back my pastel rainbow passion for another minute! Today's video is done in collaboration with my friend Doll Motion. We're both big animal lovers and have a soft spot for cats in particular. So when she asked me if I'd like to join her for a cat-themed collaboration, I said you betcha! Make sure to check out her video after this one, or if you've come over from her channel, welcome! I've got a tiny cat doll that's been waiting for me to customize it. If you've been with my channel since the early days, you may recall the Freya and Freya Huju dolls I customized. This is the same company and doll, just in miniature form. And isn't the purple color so pretty? I had to have it, so I purchased this little guy from the good old junkiespot.com. Let's get to work! First and foremost, I sketched out my vision for the doll. A rainbow color palette, even a pastel rainbow color palette, isn't easy to harmonize, so it really helps if I figure out colors ahead of time. My first version doesn't include fur, only paint. This would be much easier and quicker to make, but I couldn't help but draw a fluffy version too. And after I did that, yeah, fluffy always wins. I know adding fur will complicate the project, but I'll do my best. Let's make the clothes first. Since the doll is tiny and has a toddler-shaped body, I thought a onesie would be the perfect garment. Many years ago, I bought a onesie pattern from an Etsy seller called DG Requiem. I'll link to them below. I modified it a bit and have resized it for a number of dolls in the past, and I'm going to do that again for this doll. So it's not quite the same pattern anymore, but you've got to give credit where credit is due, don't you know? I make a rough version out of paper first hold it up to the doll, and try to adjust the size until it looks right. It's still a first draft though, so I sewed together a prototype version out of some spare cloth. Guaranteed, there will always be unforeseen problems in your first pass of a garment. Case in point, this onesie is way too small. So I make the necessary tweaks to the pattern, scale it up a bit, widen the leg hole, and here's pass number two. Then I remembered the white belly patch I drew in the concept art and decided to give that section a pattern piece of its own. I cut out the middle, add seam allowances back on, and now I'm ready to tackle a second try. Feeling confident that this one will fit, I decide to go ahead and cut it out of my tie-dye fabric. Yes, the same fabric that became fins for Aquarian and the Water Dragon. Although in this instance, I'm hoping the tie-dye fabric paired with the short, round shape of the onesie will evoke an Easter egg resemblance. I cut out two sleeves, four bodice pieces, and two belly sections out of white. No wait, the back pieces don't need the belly section, they should be solid. There we go. At least I noticed before I started sewing. First I hem the curved edge along the belly patch. Then sew them to the right sides of the front body pieces. Place the fronts together, and close up the center front seam. Also turn over and hem the back flaps. Iron the front piece flat, then place the backs on the front, right sides together. Sew the shoulder seam. Open it up, and hem the neckline. Before the sleeves go on, I sew a cute ruffle to the cuff. Fold the ruffle over, and press flat. Then attach the sleeves to the armholes. And this is when I accidentally deviate from my concept art. The idea was to have sleeves and legs mismatched color-wise, but I must have spaced out and just sewn the same colors together. <laughs> oh well. Right sides together, fold the garment in half, and sew up the side seams, including the sleeves. As we did with the sleeves, I sew a ruffle to the pant cuff, turn, and iron it. Now fold the sides right sides together, and sew the crotch seams. Fold it front to back one more time, and sew the inseam. Clip the curves in the seam allowance of the garment, particularly around the crotch and armpits where the stitches make tight turns. Then you're ready to turn it right side out, and voila! Tiny onesie complete! Then
The fit is much better this time. If anything, I overcompensated on the leg and armholes and made them too big. But I think it's still acceptable looking. Good enough to move on to the next stage at any rate. Using the same mint green 9.5mm ribbon, I tie a bow around the doll's neck. That looks about right, so I cut it down and heat seal the ends with a flame. Pom pom time! I've had this bag of mini poms for a while, and you can tell that I've picked out and used all my favorite colors, so it's mostly dark shades left. Thankfully, I have one baby blue pom pom left, and a yellow one on the other side looks okay. I scrunch up the end of the ribbon to a point best I can manage, and sew the pom poms to the tip. There we go! Next up is buttons! I draw and cut out three circles from an old notepad cover. I would describe it as a condensed cardboard, I guess. It's thin, but very firm. I temporarily stick them down to the same board using sticky tack, which will make painting them a breeze. I mix up pastel yellow, blue, and pink acrylics and give each button about three layers of paint. Once that's well and dry, I coat each button with a layer of DuraClear varnish. Poke four holes into each circle and the buttons are ready! The holes I made were a smidge tight for the size needle I ended up using to sew them to the onesie, but with some encouragement from a pair of pliers, I managed to sew all three buttons down the front. I sewed them all down the line using one embroidery thread to keep it simple. I'm really pleased with this! It's sort of... clown-like? One more thing before we can call the outfit done. A fuzzy white tail for our tiny friend. I eyeball about how long I want the tail to be, fold over and twist the wire together to double the thickness, and cut. I then fold over and tuck in the sharp ends so that they won't poke through the fabric. The side with the large loop will be sewn to the onesie. I then cut the tiniest scrap of faux fur fabric to fold over the wire and sew it together. No need for stuffing this time, it's so small that the thickness of the fabric itself will suffice. Stitch the tail on the back near the bottom. Use at least three stitches on each side of the loop for a strong connection, like sewing on a snap. I sewed it directly through the stiff velcro strip, which helps it stand up and hold a pose well. As opposed to sewing it to the cloth, which would just flop over under the weight of the tail. Time for everyone's favorite part, the face up! First bundle up your doll so that only the head is exposed. Then prep the surface with good old Mr. Super Clear UV Flat Sealant. What a mouthful! A spray specifically designed for models and dolls, it provides a layer of fine grit to work on. Ever tried drawing or painting on slippery plastic? Exactly. Next, I build up a soft white gradient on the muzzle with pastels. After each application, the doll gets another spray of sealant. This is the only way to build up layers of pastels. To be honest, it almost feels like a waste of sealant. This stuff's not cheap. But I really, really wanted to avoid using my accursed airbrush, so it was worth it. With the pastel layers built up to satisfaction, it's time to move on to paints. I'm using the Karen Dash brand of gouache paints. Drawing the eyes is usually my favorite part, but of course this doll requires inset eyes. So we'll have to have fun on the rest of the head instead. Naturally, I took inspiration from the common stripe patterns you see on your classic tabby cat. Dark lash lines for contrast, white patches of fur near the eyes, stuff like that. But in a cutesy pastel palette, of course. Getting the stripes symmetrical is tricky, but with gouache, if you mess up, all it takes is a couple of delicate strokes of a damp paintbrush to lift off the mistake. 
I did this plenty of times until I got the stripes looking even. After the first pass with the gouache, I seal it with two layers of MSC. Gouache is easily water activated, so it needs that extra layer to protect it from subsequent passes. Not bad! The stripes came out satisfyingly crisp. As you probably guessed, we will finish with a couple more sprays of sealant. Unwrap the cat. And finish the paint job by filling in those little toe beans and claws. I sealed these afterwards with varnish, not sealant, because I felt like I'd already used way too much MSC on such a small doll. Did you think the face-up was done? Nope! It's time to prepare the fur that will be glued to the doll's head and face. To do this, we'll make wefts out of acrylic yarn. Prepare a fair amount of, oh, about three inch lengths of yarn in all the colors you want. Tie them to a metal hanger. And brush them out, working from the tips to the base. We want to tease the fibers apart without ripping them. That's looking nice and puffy! For the final step, take a straightening iron on its lowest setting and run it over the weft. This will condense the fiber and make it shiny. Once all the wefts are ready, cut them off one by one and glue them to a plastic sheet. Once those are fully dry, peel them off and trim down the excess glue. Congrats, your wefts are ready! This is going to be the hardest part. I could still back out and just keep the painted version as is at this point. Nah, I gotta try it. Keeping in mind that the back of the head separates, I glue on hair in rows from bottom to top, coming right up against but not overlapping the gap. Okay, now to gradually blend the fur into the painted face up. I take it in tiny chunks at a time, matching the right colored yarn to the stripes on the forehead. It doesn't matter with the overlapping wefts, but the last weft I glue on will be visible from top to bottom. This means the glue will show. The discolored roots, if you will. There's no easy way to do it, or pointers I can give you, other than use minimal amounts of glue required to stick it on, and press the hair down in a way that flows with the curves of your design to minimize the awkward transition. At least for the stripes that come to a point, like the white stripe here, I can spin the tip into a point and line it up exactly with the paint. I also got lucky that the glue didn't noticeably discolor the white yarn. At least, not yet. Only time will tell. <laughs> That's quite the messy mane our cat has! With a trim and a whole lot of tedious feathering, I managed to tame the hair into a cute fuzzy bob. The outfit, the bow, the face-up, and the fur. That just leaves the eyes! Here's my bag of homemade doll eyes. Some look pretty cool. Others look like complete trash. But none of them are quite right, so it's time to try my hand at this once again. Instead of a clay base, I thought I'd try a completely different approach and make the entire eye inside of the resin mold. Based on which homemade eyes fit best, this size hemisphere should be the one to use. First, I sketch up the irises on a sheet of cardstock paper. I think a yellow-green will pair nicely with the cat's purple complexion. I cut those out. And now it's resin time! I'll be using a two-part resin this time, not the UV type. Which means we'll have to accurately calculate and measure out the two parts. 
Go by the instructions on your resin. Mine has a ratio of 10 to 3, but it may be different depending on the brand. Mix thoroughly. Add a lens-sized drop into the mold and slide the paper iris on top. Do your best to avoid trapping air in between. As usual, I mixed up too much resin, so I quick printed out some random irises I threw together in Photoshop and made some more eyes. Why not? Now, here, my friends, is where I got impatient. I should have waited for this layer to fully harden and cure before adding the eye whites. But I rushed it, thinking that the paper would create a sufficient barrier between colors, and that I could do it all in one pass. What can I say? It was 6 p.m. on a Friday night. But I realized my foolishness as soon as I'd done it. The white resin was clearly mixing into some of the eyes. Rather than letting failed eyes cure, I slipped out some of the irises and thoroughly mixed the resin. Who knows, maybe I can use solid eye whites for another project down the line. I just hate wasting materials. Alright, cut to Monday morning. Even the promising looking eyes failed while I was away, but it's not a total loss. I did learn something. The resin itself cured nicely, meaning the white paint I used to mix up the resin eye whites didn't hinder the chemical process. Armed with this knowledge and with more patience, I repeated this process but waited a full day in between the lens layer and the eye white layer. Will they look okay? Looks pretty promising. Oh yeah, look at that! They're still not as good as the pros, but they're certainly a personal best. It's a shame the purples took on a red tone for some reason, but overall, super happy with this new technique. And if you're curious, the other eyes came out pretty cool too. I don't know what doll will end up with those insane rainbow eyes, but I'm sure it'll be fun. <laughs> okay, let's get them in place. This is silicon putty. I pinch off about a pea-sized amount for each eye. Get the eye into position. Drop in the putty. And mush it around the sides until it's holding the eye in place. The doll's head is so small, I'm using the end of a paintbrush to get in there. With a lot of shifting and poking, eventually the eyes settled into a believable position. The head snaps back on, and we're done! Let's assemble the parts. I almost gave the cat white pom-poms on the tips of the ears. I even went as far as making them out of the faux fur fabric but decided I liked it better without. Sometimes things that work in 2D just don't strike the same chord in 3D. And with that, our springtime kitty cat is complete. Here's our spring cat next to my much earlier customized Freyer and Freya dolls. No fur, sculpted fur, or real fur. Which do you think looks best? Good news! There's another pastel cat to enjoy over on Dollmotion's channel. 
We didn't plan for this, but we were both in a pastel rainbow mood when we started our projects, so she came up with this adorable character who I absolutely love. Our dolls could practically be siblings. I'm sure you're just as curious as I am about how she designed her character, from that fabulous coat to her chunky platform shoes. Not to mention the adorable two-tone wavy bob. Let's head over there together and spread the love! There's a link at the end of the video and also one in the description box. Thank you so much for watching! Catch you next time! Stay artsy! Annyeong!